Right now on News 3, an emotional day in court as the man convicted in a high-profile murder learns his fate. And now that the elections have come and gone, how you should properly dispose of those political yard signs. This is News 3 at 10. Thank you for joining us tonight. The man responsible for killing a five-year-old boy in Beloit will face the maximum time in prison. Sergio Ortiz Regoza was sentenced at the Rock County Courthouse today. Our Adam Duxter joins us now from our bureau at the Janesville Gazette with the emotional response to this case. Adam? Well, Eric and Charlotte, it was a somber scene at the Rock County Courthouse today of friends and family of Austin Ramos Jr., the five-year-old Beloit boy killed in a drive-by shooting in 2016, filled the courtroom to hear the verdict of the man who did it. His life was taken from him, and he didn't have a choice. Today, Sergio Ortiz sat in Rock County Court while family members of five-year-old Austin Ramos Jr., told him how losing the one they loved has changed their lives. Ortiz, one of multiple men charged with murdering the Beloit five-year-old in a drive-by shooting in January 2016, was sentenced to a maximum sentence in prison today, 40 years with no chance of getting out early. Rock County Assistant District Attorney Mason Braunschweig detailed just how grueling the events were that January night. He was shot just prior to 7, 10 p.m. It had a 357 caliber bullet traveled through a car door, then through his arm, through his rib cage, and out the other side. He was not pronounced dead until 10.03 p.m. The five-year-old child suffered for three hours, fought for his life. Well, court staff read family members' messages. My mom then adds, quote, Junior didn't make it. End quote. I started tearing up, not wanting to think what she really meant. Following Ortiz's prison time, he'll spend 20 years in extended supervision. Judge Michael Hankinson saying this is the punishment worthy of the crime. As I indicated before, is a horrific incident. Um, I really can't put in words how horrific this is. Now, during court today, friends and family showed photos of Austin Ramos, who they referred to as Junior, and they described him as a loving boy. Now, there still are others that will be sentenced in this case, and for the full details and history of this case, you can visit our website, channel3000.com. Adam Duxter in Rock County tonight. Adam, thank you. UW-Madison has terminated its Kappa Sigma fraternity chapter after a near-fatal incident this summer. There it was, and the university said today the chapter violated the student organization code of conduct when people pushed that television off the chapter house balcony, nearly hitting a woman below. This was in June. The chapter may not attempt to re-register for five years, but it can appeal this decision. To weather now, Madison got some accumulating snowfall overnight, and this weekend is looking like a cold one. Chief Meteorologist Gary Canalti is in the Weather Center with more. Gary? Charlotte, looks like the cold weather will continue actually till the middle of next week, and there'll be some chances for some light snow showers or flurries, but not looking at much of anything in the way of accumulations. You can see on Doppler track tonight, a little batch of snow showers moving through areas mainly north and east of Madison, and we could see a few flurries still lingering overnight, but uh, it looks like any snow accumulation Simulations be very, very minor. Visibilities right now, uh, four miles in Madison and some light snow uh, to the north and east. Visibilities generally around five miles. That's still too high of a visibility to really even be considering anything sticking to the ground very much. High temperatures today only were around the freezing mark. In fact, here in Madison, we didn't even make it that high. 31 was the best we could do. Current temperatures are right around 20 degrees. We've been as low as uh, 19 last hour, and temperatures will probably hold nearly steady overnight. Look at the wind chills right now. Single digits through much of southern Wisconsin. Winds are in the 10 to 20 mile per hour range, and there is a wind advisory for Dodge County areas in the north and east from 11 p.m. through 6 a.m. tomorrow morning. By tomorrow morning, look for temperatures to be down to about 19 degrees. Look for sunny skies to start the day tomorrow. More clouds in the afternoon. Our high temperature at 33. That's your first alert forecast. Gary, thank you. Federal documents posted today show the city of Beloit is a big step closer to getting a new casino 
and Resort. The Ho-Chunk Casino is proposed for a plot of land along the interstate just across from the Welcome Center near the Wisconsin-Illinois state line. The plans include a 40,000 square foot indoor water park along with slot machines, tables, and a hotel. The Ho-Chunk Tribe and the city will hold a public hearing over the next 60 days. And at that point, the U.S. Department of the Interior could give final approval. The deal then would head to the governor's desk. Marijuana is one clear winner in Tuesday night's election. People in 16 Wisconsin counties were asked their thoughts on marijuana. All expressed support of some form of legalization. So what's next? We caught up with Democratic State Senator John Erpenbach, who says he will be reintroducing legislation to legalize marijuana for medical purposes, something he believes could get bipartisan support. It's not a Democrat thing. It's not a Republican thing. It's, it's something that, that a real true lib libertarian would support, and I think they do. But again, everybody knows somebody who has dealt with cancer, glaucoma, uh, whatever, whatever it might be, and odds are they know somebody, whether it's a friend or a family member, who's used marijuana as part of their overall treatment to keep, you know, food down during chemo treatments. Governor-elect Tony Eber says he supports medicinal use. Wisconsin Senate leader Scott Fitzgerald and GOP Assembly Speaker Robin Voss did not return our request for comment on the matter. Without their support, legalizing marijuana could not happen. Governor Walker has stayed out of the public eye since Tuesday's election. He's only spoken publicly through social media since then. Today, his wife, Tanette, welcomed the U.S. Surgeon General, Jerome Adams, who, after spending Thursday in Madison, today was at the Medical College of Wisconsin. First Lady wanted to focus on that event. Can you give us any insight into uh, just what it's been like for your family in the wake of the election and, and what the governor's been up to the last few days? Well, we've, we've been busy, and like I said, we're here to talk about trauma-informed care. We will have plenty of time to talk about the walkers and what they're going to do next. We're not going to sit around and, and, and not move forward with our lives. Now that midterm elections are in the past, some area residents are breathing a sigh of relief. That also means many are getting rid of those political signs that have peppered front yards. But recycling these signs isn't as simple as you would think. Chris Lewinberg tells us why. If you suffered from election fatigue, now it's probably more like post-election relief. Yeah, it's a relief. There was just a lot of buildup and suspense. One thing about election season Allison Mix won't miss is the advertisements. First of all, there's a lot less email coming in, I notice. <laughs> <laughs> the never-ending stream of political TV ads, mailers, and, of course, signs. I think they can't hurt. Uh, I don't know that anybody's uh, mind has been changed by a yard sign, but in some cases, the people in the neighborhood who maybe don't know who to vote for aren't too clear. They'll just remember seeing that name. So now, in order to let go of election season, it means getting rid of the clutter. But officials say it isn't that simple. So you think wood, cardboard, you know, no problem. Um, so this is news to me. According to the city of Madison, political signs present challenges to the recycling system. What makes these political signs so tricky is that they're made out of corrugated plastic. So for recycling systems, like what the city uses with pelletary waste systems, it's going to sort these plastic signs as if they were paper. What to do with these plastics isn't entirely clear. Of those plastic film ones and those corrugated plastic ones, Right now, we don't really have a good home for that material. That's something that would go into the refuse container. So for right now, step one would be take the plastic part off from the metal um, stakes. The metal stakes that take them to a, your municipal drop-off site or to a metal recycler near you. To mix with environmental issues at play, maybe sending election season to the curb is a political issue after all. I would certainly encourage them in the future to have recyclable yard signs. I mean, that's shocking, really. For News 3, I'm Chris Lewinberg. Madison Streets and Recycling Division says they are still looking for a processor who can accept the plastic parts of the signs. For now, those parts can be put in the garbage or saved for later. And still ahead tonight at 10, level four of the high school football playoffs. A handful of local teams still in it. Prep Mania highlights just moments away. But first, signs of the season, including at Tyrol Basin. They're making snow as we speak. Find out when they're opening next at 10.
Welcome back. The Salvation Army's Red Kettle campaign is officially underway. During a start of the season celebration today at Metro Market on Cottage Grove Road, the Salvation Army set a goal of $525,000 this season. They are still looking for bell ringers at their 71 locations across the county. About 75% of the shifts still need to be filled in order for them to reach their goal. The campaign runs until December 24th. The Dane County Farmers Market's outdoor season is wrapping up tomorrow. Market manager Sarah Elliott says vendor attendance hit its mark this year. An average of 150 vendors lined the square during the summer months. But this weekend, she's expecting lower turnout with forecasted highs only in the 30s. Next Saturday, November 17th, the market moves indoors to the Monona Terrace for the start of the holiday market season. You can hit the slopes in less than 14 hours. Tyrol Basin will be open for business this weekend on its Facebook page tonight. Tyrol says it'll be open noon to 5 tomorrow, 9 to 5 Sunday. General Manager Nathan McGree says they've been in the process of making snow now for the last couple days, pumping about 600 gallons of water through their machines every minute. And Gary says it'll probably be cold enough, right, to hang on to that for a little bit. Mm -hmm. uh, it's got to be in the mid-30s and be able to make snow, but it's got to stay below freezing for right. it to stick around. And it looks like we're going to be right around the freezing mark for the next couple of days. So I think uh, that should be the case. In fact, take a look at the high temperature trend over the next seven days. And you can see we'll be around freezing for tomorrow, maybe a couple of degrees above freezing on Sunday, but that'll only be for a couple of hours. And then even colder weather, 30 for a high on Monday and 28 for a high on Tuesday before we get back up to the middle 30s on Wednesday. Uh, uh, and then toward the end of next week, a little moderation in temperatures back to the lower 40s on Thursday and upper 30s for Friday. But they the 14-day temperature outlook uh, for uh, November uh, 16th through the 22nd, now calling for above normal temperatures from Wisconsin to westward. We've been showing this over the last couple of nights, that area above normal temperatures starting to spread eastward across the country. The below normal weather uh, pretty much confined to New England. And as far as precipitation is concerned, still a very quiet weather pattern as we get into the days leading just up before Thanksgiving which is good news because a lot of people doing traveling at that time, but below normal precipitation, especially along the eastern seaboard and to our west across the uh, high plains. Uh, the only places expecting above normal precipitation, southern Texas and the Pacific Northwest. Doppler track tonight showing just some light snow showers and flurries across southern Wisconsin to our north and west. It's down to just some very light flurries, almost too uh, light to be detected by radar. If you look at the visibilities, that tells the story. Once you start getting visibilities down to about a mile and a half or lower, that that's where you can start getting snow sticking to the ground. That might be the case up toward Rhinelander and up in Marquette, Michigan. Of course, they're getting snow off of Lake Superior, but a four mile visibility with some light snow here in Madison just isn't going to do it, at least as far as any accumulating snow. And at the Capitol, from the live view from the Edgewater Sky Camp, can't really even make out any flurries in the lights of the Capitol. High today, 31. Low temperature last hour at 19. We've actually gone up a degree with mostly cloudy skies and a few flurries reported at the airport. Winds are out of the west at uh, 14 miles per hour, but you factor those together. That's the wind chill, seven degrees above zero right now. There's snow cover through much of the Midwest, but most of it is less than an inch. This is not a big snow cover, but it's enough to keep temperatures cold near the ground. You can see just about the entire Midwest right now seeing temperatures in the upper teens to the lower 20s. And wind chills right now single digits above and even below zero across parts of southern Minnesota. Winds right now still pretty brisk out of the west and northwest in the 15 to 25 mile per hour range. There are wind advisories for areas north and east of Dane County uh, through 6 a.m. tomorrow morning. In fact, our forecast does include that wind advisory for Dodge County uh, from 11 p.m. till 6 a.m. Otherwise, overnight, uh, just uh, partly cloudy skies, windy with some scattered flurries. Low temperature about 19. Then for tomorrow, a high of only 33. Sunny skies in the morning turning cloudy in the afternoon. On future track, the flurries move out. Skies will clear by morning with low temperatures in the upper teens. Sunny skies in the morning give way to more clouds in the afternoon. High temperatures in the lower 30s. Tomorrow night, maybe a few snow showers and flurries, especially north of Madison. Low temperatures drop into the lower 20s. Then high temperatures on Sunday will get up into the middle to upper 30s with variably cloudy skies. Should be a dry day, though. And as we take a look at the snowfall amounts, if there is any accumulation, this will be mainly tomorrow night, mainly well north and west of Madison. Otherwise, 7 to 10 day forecast, those temperatures on the cold side. Look for highs is only around 30 for Monday and Tuesday, and then a little bit of a moderation in temperatures, perhaps by Monday of the following week, we're up closer to 47. That's just before Thanksgiving. All right, Gary, thank you. You're welcome. Four area teams looking for a trip to Camp Randall. The highlights, level four, the high school football playoffs just ahead in sports.
welcome to the last week of those Prep Mania intro jams. Level four playoffs tonight. Four teams from our area looking to punch a ticket to Camp Randall. State championships, they start on Thursday. First off, Wanakee looking for a repeat trip to state. They are the reigning Division II state champs. But first, got to get past Brookfield Central tonight. Lancers ball, Rashad Lampkin taking the direct snap, pushes his way into the end zone for the two-yard touchdown. But Wanakee would answer Jarrett Wolf to his left there to Will Ross, four yards on the touchdown pass. Warriors, they would play some defense to Lancers quarterback Drew Lashinsky looking deep, tosses it, but Joe Hauser there for the INT. But the Warriors did not score on the drive, and Brookfield Central, they would hold on to win 20-13 to the final. In Division Four, Lakeside Lutheran had a date with Racine St. Catherine. First possession for Lakeside Lutheran. Oh, look at that snow. They're in the red zone and driving, but St. Catherine's Tim Catheron forces the fumble and they recover. That would lead to this Isaiah Dodd with the carry, fights his way into the end zone for the seven yard score. Racing St. Catherine's on the board first, six nothing. Second quarter here now, Lakeside's Jack Monis fakes it to the running back, then steps back finding Cameron Paskey wide open for six. Warriors up now seven to six. Next possession for Lakeside, Casey Ponixani with the draw. He makes one move and then he is off to the races. 69 yards for the score and the Warriors are up 13 to six at the half. But Racing St. Catherine scoring late in the fourth quarter, beating the Warriors 30 to 28. Well, Blackhawks won 24 of their last 25 games. The one loss came to Bangor in last year's state title game. It's been a long time since they lost. This year, the rematch coming one week early. Winner heads to the Division 7 championship. Anything you can do to keep yourself warm tonight, they did it. Blackhawks striking first, Colby Argall. The five-yard touchdown score pushes his way into the end zone there. Eight-nothing Warriors. Bangor would answer in the form of Trevor Jones. He has the ball now rolling to his left, finding Jaden Fargan open there. Touchdown, Cardinals. Blackhawks, though, they would pitch a shutout in the second half. They win 24-6. to Two Division Six now, Lancaster looking for a spot in the title game at the expense of Racing Lutheran. They're down 21 zip. Hayden Knapp getting Lancaster on the board with the short touchdown run. Later, Crusaders up 28 to seven. Tyler Tenner, they take the handoff. He takes the handoff rather, going 28 yards for the score. All the way into the snow. There doesn't slip, that's talent actually. More Crusader offense, Jalen Houston. He would go 51 yards into the end zone as well for the touchdown and racing Lutheran. They win 55 to 28, the final score. So only one school will be representing our area at the state championships on Thursday, Blackhawk and Edgar. They will start off title Thursday at 10 a.m. at Camp Randall. Minota hockey now, border battle on the ice tonight. Now these two teams know each other very well. It's the 287th meeting between Wisconsin and Minnesota. Gophers come in ranked 16th nationally. The Badgers, they are 20th. Now the last time Minnesota came to the Kohl Center, they swept Wisconsin and Bucky hoping for a different result tonight. First period, Roman Akan setting up Brock Caulfield. A beautiful shot in front of the net. One nothing Badgers. Same score in the second period. This time Badgers stealing it away. Some fancy stick work here from Seamus Malone and Max Zimmer. And Wyatt Kalnick, a wide open shot. He lights the lamp. Two nothing Wisconsin. But Minnesota coming back and more. Nine and change left in the period. It's tied at two. Ryan Norman from behind to Blake McLaughlin. Back to Norman who puts it in the corner. Gophers with the go ahead goal. That would be the final. Three to two. Wisconsin loses. Wisconsin men's soccer action today taking on Michigan in the Big Ten semifinals. Michigan with the corner kick here. Check it out here. Patrick Yim of Wisconsin though. Hits his hand there. Take another look here. Ref making the right call. Yim did in fact touch the ball. So Mark Ybarra here buries it on the penalty kick and Michigan wins this one, one nothing the final. Well, the Badgers football team, meanwhile, they have to be ready for two quarterbacks tomorrow when they meet Penn State. Starter Trace McSorley's nursing a sore knee. It got to the point where he was pulled last week against Michigan. So Wisconsin could get a heavy dose of Tommy Stevens. The Nittany Lions have the second best scoring offense in the Big Ten, so the Badgers defense, they will have to be ready for anything when it comes to prepping for Penn State's quarterback. 
He's a great player. I played against him in the past. Um, dynamic for what they do and for who they are. Their backup's really good, too. He's a little bit more versatile. He does a little bit of everything, it seems like. It really won't make a difference. We just got to come out and play ball. I mean, they're a big play team. They're teams that are, you know, very skilled and, um, you know, across the board, I think they have guys who can do a, a lot of good things. So um, I say this every week, but it's the truth. We have to play our best game. and. Um, I think starting out fast, especially being at Penn State in a hostile environment, is going to be very big for us. To the Packers now, injury update. Kevin King will be out for Sunday's game against the Dolphins, while Brian Balaga, Randall Cobb, and Blake Martinez are all listed as questionable. Meanwhile, Aaron Rodgers was very complimentary of Marquez Valdez Scantling this week. The rookie wide receiver leading the team in yardage last week against the Patriots. Three catches for 101 yards. And Rodgers wants to see more of that, but at the hurry-up pace that we saw from New England on Sunday. We gotta have a little more urgency, I think, uh, getting in and out of the huddle uh, and getting the line of scrimmage and calling plays uh, on quicker cadences to start to uh, get them to show what they're doing. And uh, you know, at times we just with moving pieces and substitutions, we haven't uh, maybe had the uh, the fast-paced tempo uh, up to as fast as we'd like it to be. And hey, it's snow angel time. This was the scene at Nebraska football practice. Some players on the roster had never seen snow before. And head coach Scott Frost gave him gave them rather a proper introduction. The Huskers are two and seven this season, but hey, at least this is kind of fun. They host Illinois tomorrow. And finally tonight, a huge thank you to our crew this prep mania season. Of course, Jay Wilson on the injury report. Kevin Lewis, Car Caroline Gravy, Stephanie Olson, Dave Marcou, and Kim Crowell are awesome director Dylan Crane for these last 12 weeks of high school football. We will see you at Camp Randall on Thursday. We'll be right back.
Those dolphins might like the warm weather up here. Oh, huh? I don't think they'll like it at all. No, it's been chilly <laughs> all weekend uh, around Wisconsin, and uh, Gary's got a final check. Yeah, at least uh, the weather will be relatively quiet. What well, is all that stuff there, Gary? Uh, uh, some snow showers just uh, kind of coming through. But uh, you can see the visibility is right now generally around five miles, meaning it's not coming down too hard. Temperatures right now right around 20, but you can see those wind chills make it feel more like it's in the single digits. By tomorrow, look for a high of 33, 37 on Sunday. Precipitation-wise, I think will be uh, pretty quiet. Maybe some snow showers tomorrow night, and then dry weather for about the next 10 days. Temperatures a little warmer at the end of the week. All right, Gary, thank you, and thanks for joining us for News 3 at 10. Do something good and have a great weekend. Making plants that are weather dependent? Get an accurate 12-hour, even a 10-day forecast. Download the Channel 3000 First Alert Weather app and start planning.